Ever feel like you're doing this teaching thing alone? You don't have to be. Share Teaching is all about sharing the workload through the power of collaboration and teamwork. Together, we'll walk through all the difficult parts of teaching and learn how to streamline our processes, fine tune our time management, and develop a more manageable workload. If that sounds like a dream come true to you, then welcome to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Let's share in the teaching to make those dreams a reality. Now here's today's Shared Teaching. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Shared Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Susan, and you are listening to episode number 38, which is the final episode of the year 2021. Going forward in 2022, I promise to have more consistent content being released every Wednesday. And as always, if you'd like to be a part of what I call the shared teaching team, which means you're collaborating with me, you're helping me come up with ideas, you're offering input, because I want this to be a place of sharing and collaborating and working together. So I'm always willing and open to your ideas. So if you have something specific that you want to hear about, please take a moment to go to shareteaching.com forward slash podcast. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see a place where you can enter into a Google form and put your ideas there. So that being said, Let's go ahead into episode 38, which is revising your classroom management plan after break. So if you're anything like me, your classroom management plan stops working after a little bit. And I don't even need to tell you that the behaviors this year have increased dramatically. And it's so weird to me how much difference a year out of school can make for these students and their behaviors in the classroom. Like I'm still every day, I'm like, I just don't get it. What's going on? This is the weirdest school year. And I know, I absolutely know I am not alone in that. I've heard that from high school teachers, middle school teachers, other district personnel, people outside of my district, Facebook groups. The world is exploding with teachers complaining about things going on this year, and it's frustrating and it's stressful. So I am here to try to help alleviate some of that stress because I'm also feeling that stress, and I want to help. So... The most common behaviors I'm seeing in my personal classroom is a lack of respect for following the rules, which includes this nonstop talking and these noises throughout the lessons. Like it is driving me up a wall. I can't stand the random noises. It's like bird calls and weird clicking of the tongues. And I just, I don't even, I can't even articulate. I'm just... I'm hearing these noises and they're wearing the masks. I'm like, who's doing that? What's going on? And I can't figure it out to correct the appropriate students. I think that's what's making it also so frustrating is you can't quite tell where some of these things are coming from. The other issue I'm seeing is students are being really mean to each other and they're quick to want to physically fight to solve their problems. And unfortunately, this is also backed by the students telling me that their parents say that they should fight back, they need to stand up for themselves. And no matter how many times I go over, well, it's not the school policy, it's not our district policy. If you do those things, you will be in trouble, no matter who starts what. And, you know, you can't really go against (laughs) the parents when you're dealing with seven and eight-year-olds or even younger. But I teach second grade, so... We're looking at seven, eight, some nine-year-olds coming up here soon, but I also have a seven-year-old, and if someone were to tell her that her mom was wrong about something, like, her little world would change, right? So you can't really convince a student that their parents are wrong in their thinking, so we really have to try to wait and navigate that space. So it's very easy to say, 
but especially hard to do, but I'm really working on trying to let go of the things out of my control and focus on what I can do. And I've had several phone conversations with these parents that I'm talking about, and I've also involved my administration for backup and also as a more authoritative voice on how that is not appropriate to fight, (laughs) but it's still not easy to change someone's mind. So since I can't control those things, I can only do the best I can, now I'm focusing on how can I improve the culture of my classroom? Because there's a lot of infighting within my classroom. A lot of the students aren't getting along. They loved each other one year. They hate each other this year. So I really need to find a way to change that. So the first thing I did was I evaluated my classroom management plan. Now, it's important not to scrap everything, right? But you really need to reflect on what's working and what's not. And so I decided that my classroom rules were not working very well. But the issue is not the rules because the rules have been there forever. I use the five rules from, of course, right when I record a podcast episode, I draw a blank. But it's the... um, Whole brain teaching rules. So I use those classroom rules. So I know that they're tried and true. They work. I've used them for many years. So it's not it's the rules that are the problem. It's how I am coming across with explaining my rules. And maybe I'm not 100% clear on the expectations for the rules. I've gone over them, you know, when school started. I mention the rules every day. I'll be like, oh, so-and-so, what's number three? Because maybe that's the one that they're having trouble with. And then they'll tell me. But beyond that, do they really know what I'm looking for? Have they themselves taken ownership of these rules? Are they adopting the belief that these rules are important? Because once they do that then their outlook on breaking them will change. So I need to figure out why they're ignoring the rules. And in order to do that, I kind of need to do a lot of reflection. So another thing that's not working well is using champs in my classroom. Now, champs is also not a horrible procedure. It's been around. Many teachers find lots of success for it. The problem with champs is that I'm not consistent using it. So once you lose that consistency, the kids are all over the place because they're like, oh, well, yesterday this was fine and today that's not fine. So I really need to be more mindful of actually putting into place more, not just having pretty posters on my board that I do nothing with, like I don't address it. We talk about the voice level all the time, but I'm not talking about the rest of the champs. So if you're not familiar with champs, it's an acronym, C-H-A-M-P-S. And what you do is you teach students your expectations for each part of what you're doing in a lesson. So CHAMPS is basically just a behavior management tool, and it goes through your, like I just said, your expectations. So it is, how are you wanting students to behave? Are they going to be sitting with a zero voice level? How are they getting help? How are they going to be successful with those lessons? So our school already uses CHAMPS, and (laughs) they only took three of the letters. So unfortunately, they took MAC, which (laughs) is maybe not the most kid-appropriate acronym to use, but it is an elementary school. So they do MAC, so they talk about the movement the activity and the conversation in the hallway and the lunchroom. So I really liked the idea of continuing in into my classroom. So I really need to make sure that I'm following through on that and hopefully following through on my expectations for each lesson is going to show improvement in the disruptive noises and the off-task behaviors. So the other thing, after you kind of reflected on the current things that are and are not working in your classroom, is to find two new techniques for your classroom management. So the things that I do is I look at what's going to work with this year's students. So if you've been teaching longer than a year, you know that no two classes are alike. So your techniques need to change and shift according to the class that you have. One class might be super quiet and hardworking. Another class might be very noisy. So how can you kind of channel that 
into what's going to work for that classroom. And like, just as a general, what is your classroom's behavior? Um, and what's their, what's their personalities like? That's going to really help you figure out techniques that you can use to add to your classroom management plan that's really going to speak to what your students are going to respond with. So my class this year is really responding to rewards, and they're not my favorite thing. I hate offering students rewards, and I feel the same way with this about my personal child. (laughs) I just, I grew up with the mindset of you just do it to do it. You do it for that internal pleasure. You don't do it to get an external thing, but that's kind of the way the world's shifting nowadays. So we kind of have to get on board, and I hate, hate to say that. So the way I'm getting on board is to recognize positive traits. So it's not rewards for doing something per se, but it's trying to turn that motivation internally for students. So it's something that I did many, many years ago. One of my first couple years of teaching, I created a whole system of a clip chart system that was focused on positive behavior traits. And at that time, I was working for a school that was called the Baltz Tigers. Shout out to Baltz. And we had an acronym for TIGER. And at the moment, I can't remember all of them, but it was like timely was the T. So responsible was the R. So each letter of the acronym stood for a positive trait that we were looking for in our students. And it was a PBIS school. And so as a whole school, we were looking for those traits. And I decided to turn it into a clip chart idea. So rather than clipping up and down for positive and negative behaviors, they would simply clip to earn that positive trait. So this was a long time ago. (laughs) Like I said, one of my first couple years of teaching. And so what I decided to do was color-coordinated popsicle sticks, and the students were trying to earn each one for getting, like, the rainbow paw, right? Now, I would not recommend this because it was a lot of work trying to, like, manage that and finagle that. So this year, I'm streamlining that concept, and instead of having a clip chart, they're going to have posters, and they sign their name to the poster when they're recognized for that particular trait. Rather than getting a popsicle stick that I have to keep track of, things fall on the floor, they lose them, they don't fit in the pocket chart very well, I'm just simply having them dry erase write their name on a poster, and then we're trying to earn all the posters by the end of the week. And I believe I chose, oh gosh, now that I did it, I'm not sure. Let me look real quick. I chose six traits. And I based the traits off of other things I've seen online. And so that's how I chose my traits. I chose ones that I wanted the students to be real rounded with. And the way I introduced it in my classroom is that we are working on being better people. So it's not necessarily for our classroom today, but it's for making us become the people that we want to be in our future. Like, who do we see ourselves when we're grownups? And that's kind of the way I approached it. So I also come from um, an IB school. The last um, three years ago, I worked at an IB school. And I took a lot of things that I learned there, and I've adapted them to my current classroom because I really liked that idea of, We're working towards a positive good, like how can we be better for humanity? And maybe that sounds super cheesy, but as a teacher, we have the we have the means to really impact a large group of people. And I say, let's just go for it. You know, even if like two of the students in this year's class remember those traits and they carry them forward. That's, that's a difference that I've made in their lives and the lives of people around them. So I will take it. Okay. So now going back to champs, or actually going back to techniques and classroom management. So we're doing the positive traits. And before we left for winter break, I began front loading. So every day we went over one of the traits and we explained their definitions. We talked about what it would look like in our classroom. And when we would return from the break, we're going to kick off the new program. So I'm going to revisit it a little bit more and we're just going to start full on 
when they come back, like, okay, here's what I'm looking for for this week. This is where we're starting. And we're just going to dive right in because I feel like the more time I spend talking about it, but not implementing it, I'm, I'm wasting a bunch of time there. So I just want to get started with it. I feel like as we go, they'll gain a better and better understanding of these traits because we're going to revisit them. So every six weeks, we're going to have the same trait come up again, and we're going to talk about it again. So there's always that focus of keeping it in the front of their minds of what it means. Hopefully this is making sense. So the main focus of this program is recognizing positive traits shown in individual students. And then I'm going to set a weekly class goal that's rewarded with free or low-cost rewards because I ain't about spending a lot of money in my classroom right now. I just I just can't do it. I just bought a house. So I'm looking for things like maybe it's a crazy sock day or maybe it's extra recess time. What's going to not cost me a lot of money, but the class is excited to earn towards? So what I always like to do is do like a little um, list with the students and I ask them to offer their suggestions and then we just compile a list together and then I'll choose from that list so I know I'm picking from things that the students will like. Okay, so the weekly class goal is going to coincide with the week's focus trait and I'm going to share like a short video and a picture book that talks more about that trait. So what does it really look like? When it's in practice, what does respect look like? What does caring look like? Can I find a book and read about that? And then we maybe have a short discussion on what we noticed these characters showing and how did they show this trait? So a weekly focus on one of those traits. And then as we go through the week every day, I'm also looking to see any of those six traits from students. So we're recognizing those six traits and I'm calling them out specifically, right? So we always want timely and specific feedback for grades. We want to do the same thing with their behaviors. So I always use Johnny. (laughs) Don't, Don't know why this poor Johnny. So, you know, Johnny, I really loved the way you helped this girl pick up her markers in the hallway when her pencil box dropped. That really shows me that you are showing caring trait towards another person. And then they would come back in the classroom and they would sign their name to the caring poster. They would get a mark it on their little reflection page that goes home every day so that their parents can see that they were caring that day as well. Okay, so when I look at what I'm trying to add to my classroom, what techniques I want to add, I really need it to be very simple and easy to maintain. I'm not all about cutting out a lot of bits and pieces and laminating and changing things out each month. To be honest, I'm a little lazy. Like, I don't have time for all of that. I'm I'm too busy in the classroom. I don't want to stay late anymore. I'm getting to that point where I just need to go home and unplug the best I can So what's going to work for me that's not going to take a lot of time? And this idea is not taking a lot of time. I don't have to create things and, like I said, laminate things and, like, change things out. I'm literally just, like, erasing a poster that I laminated and I'm writing on it. Like, okay, now for this week, here's what our new focus is. Here's what our new goal is. And I'm just changing that and updating it. So... That to me is a huge time saver. So think about things that are going to work for you that you're going to have follow through for that is not going to cost you a lot of time prepping and planning it. So I really want to build up my students and not dwell on the ones that are not following the rules. Kind of like how you you have to pick and choose, like which students are you going to choose to focus your time and energy on? The ones that are going to be able to show you growth or the ones that are going to be stagnant and not move anywhere because they're just, they're not invested in their learning. And as horrible as that is to say, at some point as a teacher, you kind of have to reach those decisions of, well, I'm going to work with the kids that I know I can push and they can do well. We're not going to completely ignore those other students that maybe have a bad attitude and they're upset all the time and they don't want to learn, so they're disruptive. We need to show those kids a lot of love and a lot of nurturing, but we want to make sure that the other kids are getting their small group time, their one-on-one time, you know, what do they need as well? So same thing with recognition, right? We want to 
reward those showing the positive behaviors because a lot of times that kind of pushes the students that are not positive into showing those traits as well because they don't want to be left out, right? That's never a good feeling. Okay, so consistency is key. No matter what type of classroom management style you have, consistency is key in going and seeing, keeping it going and seeing success. If you continue to follow through each day with your rules and procedures, it's going to show your students your expectations. Now, I know this year has been a struggle, myself included, (laughs) big struggle. So it's taking a lot more patience than usual to get the classroom that we're wanting. So I want you to take a few minutes to write out what you expect from your students. Then I want you to reflect on whether or not they understand your expectations. Are your expectations crystal clear? If you're struggling with that, then The Daily Five is a book that I recommend that is a very short read that walks you through how to set up and explicitly teach those expectations. Now, you don't have to follow the exact Daily Five. You don't have to have the read to self and all of those pieces, but the part I like about it is that you are so specific on the do's and the don'ts of your expectations that it's really worth reading that book if you haven't. So plan time when you return from break to revisit your classroom rules and procedures with your class. Plan to make a few anchor charts with your class and remind them of the expectations. Spending just 10 minutes a day on this for a week or two should really help significantly with some of the behaviors. Other behaviors will take a while to phase out, but if you keep at it and you keep consistent, you will start to see results. Now, if you don't see results with some of the students, then maybe that means they need an individual behavior plan. Maybe you need to get with your... um, intervention team or your special ed team and see what it is that you need to be doing to track these behaviors and turn them around. So if you've made it through this whole episode and you're still feeling confused about what you should do with classroom management, then you might be interested in taking my classroom management online course. So it's kind of like PD, professional development in your jammies, right? It's called CLASS in capitals. Room Management Adventure. And of course, I'm big on acronyms. So C-L-A-S-S, CLASS, is an acronym that I explain in the course. It is right now $29, so I tried to make it super affordable. It's videos of myself walking you through step-by-step how to create a classroom management plan that's tailored to your needs and your personality. And I think that's really key because they don't kind of, they don't teach this stuff in school. They They want you to look at your mentor and kind of mirror what your mentor does, and maybe you have to have an assignment where you write out your classroom management plan or your philosophy, right, for teaching, but that's kind of as far as it goes. They don't show you how to implement it once you're in the classroom. So I've walked through everything I've learned from all my trials and errors, and I've had a lot. I used to be a screamer and a yeller, and I'm not proud of it, but that's reality. I didn't know how to control my class when I first started teaching. And some days I feel like I still don't because right now, like I said, the behaviors are crazy. And I know I'm a good teacher, but for some reason, some of the students are just continuing with their behaviors. So I'm revising, I'm revisiting, I'm doing what needs to be done. And I would like to help you on that same path because who wants to have a crazy year, right? So you're more than welcome to check that out. It's listed on my website, so shareteaching.com. And then there is a spot at the top of my website that says courses. And you can read all about the classroom management adventure there. And of course, I'm not expecting you to buy it. But if it's interesting to you and you want to give it a try, it's there and it's affordable. And I would love to hear that you've gone through it and it works And it's made you rethink and reevaluate and have a much more manageable class. I would love that for you. So break time is always a good time to reevaluate what works and what doesn't in your classroom. It's tempting to want to wait and start fresh with a new school year. But if it's not working right now, then you have time to turn it around and still have an amazing rest of your year. So as always, I would love if you would rate and review this podcast on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, I think is what we're calling it now. And 
I want to know what is working well for you this year. What are some classroom management techniques that are doing an amazing job that you want to share with your fellow teachers? Please make sure you let us know so that we can give you a shout out and other people can see what works well so we all have hope for our future. Have a wonderful end of this year and I will see you in 2022. Bye for now. If you've loved this show, then join me in sharing the teaching, hitting that subscribe button, and leaving us a review on iTunes, so we can be found by more teachers like you who are ready to start sharing the workload. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Find new episodes each week on shareteaching.com. Thanks for listening to the Share Teaching Podcast.